everyone, welcome to part 5 of our Model Factory Hero 112 scale Lantia HF Delta Integral Evo 92 video build. I look forward to saying that in every video. Um, we're going to continue on today where we left in part 4. We've got all the parts ready to assemble all the brakes, suspension, all the rear differential, all the house and suspension components, fuel tanks in the rear, get some hoses on, uh, and just get assembled everything we prepared in part four a lot of parts to do this was a lot of footage all edited into two videos as i said i've tried to hang around a bit to show everything in a bit more detail so i hope you don't find it boring if you've got any feedback on the videos pop them down below and i'll always take on board what you're asking there we go let's get cracking with part five hey everyone please subscribe to the channel click the bell notifications get notified our latest videos give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right, so exactly where we left off in part four a couple of days ago, this is where we're at. So we've got all the parts prepped, primed, painted, detail painted, any parts that need doing in place, um, ready for assembly. We've still got some detail parts to do. We need to carbon these two brackets to go over the fuel tank or fuel cell. Um, and obviously, we've got everything to actually physically assemble. Also not shown there is the smaller tank that goes on the back. But there's our chassis. And here's our brakes as we left them. So we assembled the front and back pieces to these. And then we're going to put the front hub section on. So a couple of dabs of this new glue that I've been using. The X-Pro glue. You can find a twin bottle of that in my Amazon store. It's about £6 for a couple of bottles of it. Really good quality. With these nozzles you can also find in my store. It's very, very precise to get the glue exactly where you need it. And on this, just need a couple of dots right in the locating points that we drilled out. And belt and braces a little bit on the edge as well, should you require. Line these up. Make sure you get the right way around. I'll pop them in place. They're looking great. Nice contrast between the gold of the hub and the silver burnt iron colour of the disc itself. And then the caliper goes on the back. Like so. Dries really quick, this glue, so you need to be quite precise where you're applying it. I stuck to myself to myself several times with it. If you're unsure, use a slower glue like the Bob, Bob, Bob Smith's um, Gold, which is a lot slower drying because it's odorless. It takes a lot longer to dry. But if you're confident, you can use this. Like I said, a couple of little dabs on the locating points for the front part of the caliper. Don't go mad putting in loads here. You don't want all to squeeze out and ruin your hard work. Hold it for a second or two, and there we go. There's one disc and caliper done, or two actually. We do the other two, and we're good to go. And then the suspension tops. So, like I say, most of the holes were drilled out previously. A few have been left, unfortunately. Um, but hey, it is what it is. I'm just checking the fit. They're looking good. Now, the springs, I foolishly expected these to fit straight in. And uh, lo and behold, they did not. So they needed stretching a bit to fit. Which is a little bit precarious. So basically I used two bulldog clips in either end of the spring. And just gently pulled it until I got the appropriate length. Took a little bit of fettling. Unfortunately I didn't catch it on camera. I had to bring it right into my body for the strength um, to do it. But literally I just put a bulldog clip in each end. Side on. And just gently prized it apart. And then pushed it back together so the spring was equal. This top part needs to be on a specific way. So make sure you line it up with the chassis. Um... You'll see what I mean in a minute. So that sits in there. There's like a flat part at the back that sits in the top underneath. Just looking at admiring my disc. Probably showing the chat on the live stream. And here we go. So we have stretched this spring and then pushed it back into shape a little bit. It needs a little bit of finesse, but we can do that when it's on. It's not too bad. Uh, a little bit disappointing. Not the best fit. Uh, but again... Test fit, test fit, test fit. Uh, once you're happy, you've got the shape of it, which just needs a little bit more finesse. Uh, we can glue it in place. 
and there we go so all drilled out springs are stretched as in how we want you see two of them together may need a little bit of finessing later on uh, but they're in place they're fiddly very very fiddly so take your time be very careful and there we go pop that in place and you can see it looks just a little bit too short so give it a little stretch even it all out before you commit to glue and you'll be good to go it just needs a little bit of finesse a little bit of um fiddling and stretching and bending and what have you but they will go on i'm just a little bit disappointed they weren't kind of the right size because they are way short um so be prepared to mess about with these they're the correct color according to the video and everything that i've got which is really really good because uh, i originally thought they were black in the kit and they're not like a bronzy burnt color which is spot on for the real color now we can start some real assembly. So we've got the rear differential housing with the differential itself. Can apply a little bit of this glue. There's a screw that goes through this as well, but this is belt and braces. Make sure it's in. It'll only go in one way. So make sure it's in. Make sure it's pushed fully down. So push down from the top and then flip it over. Look underneath at the locating points, and they should be both there, showing equally at the bottom. Be careful of the glue. It's very easy to get glue in your fingers now and ruin all your hard work. And then this piece sits on top. Like so. And then we've got those suspension arms at the top right up there by the glue. The slot over. And then pieces go through the back. Now, I foolishly thought this piece went on first. And I did actually put it in there. And then I realized, oops, I forgot about the arm. So I did it in a bit of a test fit. It fitted okay. Needs a little bit of straightening out here and there. But it's going to need to screw into the chassis anyway. So we can get it all screwed in place and then give a bit of a, a stretch around. But I'm just checking it fits and it did. Absolutely perfect. So take it back off. Pop these arms in place. Now these are handed. They go a specific way because there's an angle piece you screw on later. So refer to your instructions and make sure you notice which way it goes. So basically when it's bent, um, the end of the arm is straight. You'll see what I mean when you go to screw it in place. So just follow the instructions and you can't really go wrong at all. But this takes a little bit of um, manipulation now, trying to hold 12 things at once while pushing two things in. Sounds absolutely perverse and disgusting. Um, but it's a little bit tricky to do. So again, test fit. Make sure everything fits before you commit to glue. And once you're happy, put a little dab of glue in there. It doesn't take a lot at all, to be honest. You can get away with not gluing this completely. Get away with not gluing it. But I chucked a little bit in there just to hold it in place. So I find get one side in work just as well there's a tiniest little bit of glue in there not a lot at all uh, and then pop in this side on make sure we've got the right way around you say it's tricky to do you've got a lot of things to hold and line up this is the easiest way i found like i said there is a little dab of glue on there not a lot at all you don't need a lot because like i say these parts are all screwed in place on the chassis so they're all pretty sturdy anyway but like i said a little dab of glue does no harm push it fully home make sure it's all in and there we go, that's that bit done. Nice and simple. And then the drive shafts. Now, like I said, I haven't realized it yet. These are the wrong ones. These should be on the front, and the front should be on the back. Thankfully, when I was doing the engine, something was niggling at me not to glue them in place. So I just put a little bit of PVA-based glue and glaze on there, which means I can get them back off, which thankfully I could with no damage at all, and a quick switch of route. Nobody would be any the wiser. So a little bit of glue on the back where the exhaust is going to go. Make sure you've got A, the right piece, and B, it's the right way around, because once everything is in on top, you can't get this piece back out. We kind of have to guess where it goes for now until we build the rest of the exhaust. So I've just kind of had a look and guessed. Um, well, there we go. There's our rear differential housing all together. Notice the bit of glue stuck to my finger. Yeah, that's a bit of super glue that was on the chassis. You'll see it in a minute when I turn it over. That took a little bit of the paint off. Luckily and thankfully... It's right under where the fuel tank sits, so we're not going to see it, but it's a perfect warning of being careful with your fingers. If you are touching stuff, always wipe them off on each other to see if it's sticky. Unsure, have a spare cloth or a bit of tissue to one side, sacrificial, and just keep wiping your fingers because you'll do damage like I did. Thankfully, you'll see it in a second, it's right where the fuel tank sits, so it will never ever be seen. And there we go, that's that in place. Like I said, there is a screw that goes in the top, but we'll sort that out a bit. So, straighten that part out a little bit. We can straighten all this out later 
The white metal is very manipulable. Is that even a word? Manipulable? Malleable? Is that the word? Possibly. Um, so you can straighten around that. These arms, I hadn't drilled them, so I just drilled them while they're on the kit. Not ideal, but hey, again, I've not paid attention to everything that needs drilling. And it's not too late, it doesn't cause any damage at all. So line them up with the holes, get the appropriate screws out of the box. I bought these nice little storage boxes off Amazon. There's a link for these in my Amazon store as well. Six of those little boxes for just under £10. Absolute bargain. Ideal for keeping all these screws in. So first off, we've got this big long one. You can see the patch of paint missing there. That's where my finger pulled all the paint off. Luckily, it's under the fuel tank, thankfully. We're going to get this longer screw in. That goes right through the white metal housing of the rear diff and right into the resin diff itself. Not quite got it on camera, do apologise. But sometimes building the model takes preference over the filming. And to get things like this in place, you're often not conscious of where your hand is. So, yes, do apologise every now and then we've got a shot, but literally screwing that screw in until it stops. No real force. And there we go. That's that glued in place. And then these ones, we've got the appropriate screws again. Just look at the sizes and you can figure it out by looking in the box. And again, we already pre-drilled the hole before using the appropriate size drill bit because we looked at the drill bit, uh, the screws that are going in. And then same for the other side as well. Just some gentle screwing. If we do damage any paint, we can touch it up later. It's not the end of the world. Like I say, we can get all these in, start straightening things up. Then we've got these two arms up front. Didn't bother gluing these at all. Just plonked them in. They're pretty well secure. And again, screwed in just there at the side. So beautiful metal tones, really coming together now. Really a start to look the part. Oh, we did put a bit of glue in. We put a bit of glue in this bit, I remember now. So the screw goes in the lower bit, and then we put a little bit of glue on this where the locator point goes. That's right. And again, you may find just things need manipulating, bending a little bit, just into shape. It's the beauty of the white metal that you can move it around. So there is a little bit of a fitment issue. You just give it a little bit of pressure. And get it in place and again the appropriate screw and this is where it's while where your prep comes in make sure you screw the right size holes at the beginning don't get it wrong um, if you do you could do what i just did so i popped a little bit of glue in the screw hole and then pop the screw in and that hole in so if you do drill the wrong hole like i must have there just pop a little bit of super glue in screw it in as good as you can and then the glue will get a hold of it and glue it all in place and then we've got these little arms here that go to the hubs. They pop in the side, and there are some resin um, bolts, these things, that just slot in. So I've got the tiniest little bit of glue in there. Like so. And then on the other side, tiny little bit of glue in that end. Pop the arm in. Now, these parts aren't moving, so... It doesn't matter if they get glued, but obviously we don't really want to glue them right in place right now. I was still moving things around and then just slot in the bolt. And then this is the screw for the suspension turret. So we're going to screw, screw it all the way through and keep screwing until it goes loose because we don't need this to be the physical part that's screwed. And then offering this up in the correct way, like so, we're going to place it in loosely. Get it lined up with the screw. Now, don't be forceful with bits like this because these are easy to break. If there's any, what's the word? Any, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Any resistance is the word. That's it. If there's any resistance, take it back out and just check again. And there we go. That's in. We've got the hub in place at the top. Now, these were especially tricky. I've cut out quite a bit here where I had to fiddle around for ages trying to figure out what was going on. And I just didn't quite have it lined up and I didn't notice. After a while, I found if I held it, little dab of glue in the back again, and then just pushed in the pins. There we go, job done. Two in each side, very fiddly to do. And then I also realized that I didn't put that piece in. See that suspension arm I've just folded down there? That slots in there. And then that arm goes over the top. Whereas here, this is before then, I haven't noticed and I've glued this in place. So I quickly had to take the arm out and then put the other support an arm back down and glue it back in place so pay attention to what you're doing it's easy to miss things and then those arms that are folded in they screw in underneath on the angle piece i was talking about into the hub 
You've got this rear anti-sway bar, I guess. It, I don't know what this is. Anti, it's not really an anti-roll bar, is it? I don't think. And there's little linkages that go on the end. Uh, we are zoomed out quite far, unfortunately, but they are just tiny little uh, like rose-jointed hinges or linkages. And one goes in the top, one goes in the bottom. They're just connected together. You will find you have to bend this um, part round a little bit to get it to fit. But like I say, very easily uh, manoeuvrable. And there we go. Slot it in place. Nice and easy. And then some PE. So these are the rear of the disc. They're like a uh, stone protector, are they? Like a uh, stone protector for the calipers and the discs. Um, so nice bright PE. I didn't want it to be nice bright PE. So I cleaned it up with the, um, the diamond Tamiya PE file to get rid of any other fret uh, burrs that are left behind. And then I grabbed a UMP sponge using circular motions, just scuffed it up. I didn't want it to look used, but I didn't want it to look all nice and shiny. So I just give it a bit of a scuff up with the sander, nice and simple. And then a few dabs of this uh, gel type glue, super glue, CA glue. We can get it in place. Loving these applicator tips. Absolutely brilliant. So precise. I know a few of the guys have bought them as well and they're loving them. And uh, yeah. A very useful addition to the glue armory. As is the super glue itself, I'm using really nice, really cheap, and really does get a hold of parts really well. And there we go, there's those in place. And then we've got the pad retention bars, I guess they are, which need bending into shape. So, kind of did these by eye, uh, and they're replicated here four times. So, this is the nickel wire that comes with the kit. So I've already cut one off that's a perfect size. I've made this one. I'm just going to cut them roughly to the same length. Have a little look. There we go. We've got our lovely little wire snips that my good buddy Andy Kellis gave me many moons ago. I use for cutting all my metal work. Absolutely brilliant snips they are. Hold on to the wire because it will ping off at lightning speed into the oblivion. As will these little bits now. There it goes. Click right for the screen on the monitor. There we go. And uh, like I say, make four of those. They need trimming, give them a little bit of a trim. Need deburring, give them a little bit of a file. But overall, we're pretty good just doing it this way. And then have a little tiny dab of CA glue smallest amount we can offer up again refer to instructions make sure you get it the right way and just place it there's two little locating points for these to sit in and we can repeat that for the other one as well so nice simple nice little bit of detail that's added to it they looked apart. They do look really nice. Those calipers with the uh, embellished white Brembo logos look really, really good. Sadly, you're not going to see any of this behind the wheels because of the type of wheels that they are. Um, but, hey, we see them along the way. And we always know that they're behind there. And then we need to drill out the center of the wheel as well. And, again, I didn't think of this earlier on. There's a screw that goes through the center later on to hold them on. Holds the wheel in place. So drilling straight through the middle, nice and gently. There we go. And then with the hub, there's a little nut that's went in behind. I must have missed filming that bit. But before you put it in place, and it's held in with the drive shafts, we've got the proper drive shafts in now as well. Uh, it just press fits between the hub and those drive shafts. No glue or nothing can just sit in place behind. And then that allows that screw bolt, machine bolt, to go through and screw everything in place. So... Put a little bit of glue on the hub. We've got the disc and caliper all lined up correctly as it should be. And I'm just test fitting that A, the screw fits, and B, popping it on. So just in case the caliper and disc fall off, they don't fall on the floor. And there we go. That's that repeated for the other side as well. And now we can start assembling our tanks. So again, lots of little parts to put on. Lots of little hoses, breather pipes, level pipes, all sorts of stuff. So just some careful CA glue application as per usual. 
a few a few little spots of pee to put on too. So while that's drying, that um, filler hose that we put on with the heat shrink needs a couple of Jubilee clips on. So to cut off the fret, I've grabbed an old brush using one of our sanders as a roller. We can roll it into a cylindrical shape and then basically the way I like to do it is pop the parts through. So they are really good, nice uh, PE Jubilee clips. These The edges fold up, as you've already done with the bending pliers. And then there's a slot for this to slot through. I just slotted it through and bent it over roughly to hold it and then pushed it into as much of a circular shape as I could, like so. And then use the Tamiya benders to bend them back on themselves and that stops it coming apart. And then it just slotted over the top. We can get it with one it, push it through properly, grab the pliers again or tweezers and pull it tight and bend it back again. And there we go, there's a Jubilee clip in place. And then repeat that for the other one. And nice little touch, these look really, really good. Nice PE uh, Jubilee clips, they look really good. Hose clamps, whatever you want to call them. And there we go, just position them in place. I did put a tiny little bit of uh, CA glue behind them just to hold them in. And there you go, job done. And then one goes around this little neck here. We did lose a little bit of paint, unfortunately. So we did touch it up with a bit of uh, Mr. Surfacer. Now the two brackets that hold the fuel cell in, looking at closer pictures online, which I have found in the original car, it is a Kevlar fiberglass carbon composite, whatever it is, in this colour. Luckily I had a sheet um, at hand, so cut out a couple of strips, hit it with UMP strong solution, let it sit and do its thing, and kept working it on and off for the next 10 minutes or so until it was all nicely conformed and set in shape. Make sure you get it concentric where you want it. Like I say, come back a few minutes later, just keep giving it a light brush. Keep loading it up with the decal solutions. And then fold everything over with your finger. And there we go, job done. I did apply a little bit of heat as well, um, just to make sure everything was fully conformed. And it laid down really well. Quite a tricky little part to do, and two of them as well, so we did two there. Now this fuel cell, metal methylamine, wherever the hell it is, ethylene, water mix tank, um we were looking around the colors and me and jamie settled on this color jamie went with F xf60 and i've gone with its equivalent in lp which is their dark yellow um so it's primed in white tamiya primer we did prime it in black with the surface before so i reprimed it a couple of coats of that job done and then on the very bottom of those brackets that we uh 2k'd earlier on there are these little photo etch hoops that we cut off the fret, a little dab of this pro glue. Don't know why I'm using it then. And there's four each, sorry, two each on those straps, and then four on the other tank holder as well. So there's a little bit of glue and some careful positioning with the tweezers. Right out of camera shot. We can line all those up, and these are for the straps to hold everything in place, which we'll get to in a little bit. Well, four of those in total, just some careful glue and careful cutting. Be careful they don't ping off, because if they ping off, you'll probably never see them ever again. And then we've got some of the hose union joints to do. So we've done the bigger pieces in red again, and we'll do the smaller part in blue. Lots of these to do. As you see here now, I'm doing these four in preparation for what's coming up in a bit. And then forget where I've put them. I have to paint some more to finish what I was doing, to look over and think, oh, there they are. They're already painted and I forgot. So we have four set up when we need them next time. But for today, we're going to have to paint some more in a bit because I'm a bit of an idiot. So the red side's done. Onto the blue. These are Tamiya lacquer paints. This is LP52 and 68. Clear red and clear blue. And there we go. Put this to one side. Now we've got one strap on. You've got to be careful how you say this. One of the straps is on. And we've got the other now. So cut the ribbon at an angle. Slide it through the PE hoop that we put on earlier. And gently tease it through. And then we'll cut off the end we cut on an angle to get it through. So we've got a nice clean edge. I like using the PE shears for this. They cut the ribbon really cleanly. 
And then we'll grab some of the double sided tape that comes with the kit. Tricky to do, tricky to use, takes a bit of practice doing this. The tape can be a bit of a pain, especially getting the back of paper off. That always turns into a bit of a farce. Once you've done that, fold it over itself and stick it to it. And I just popped a couple of pieces strategically over the top and stuck the ribbon to it. So we've got the nice leading edge front where it wraps around the bracket and at the back where you can't see. We're just going to stick it to this double-sided tape and cut it flush because you can't see down the back. There we go. Perfect. And then we can pop it in place. So it just slots over the top. And then there's a locating point right at the front. So we put a little dab of the glue in there. And a little bit more for look. And then pop it over the top. So we've got a nice mixture of the carbon with the straps as well, which is exactly what the real car has. So hold it all in place. And a little bit of pressure will hold that bracket and get it glued nicely in place. So there we go, there's that one. And then the little one, similar kind of process. We've got a few parts to glue in place. So some careful C application. Make sure you're all the right parts, are orientated the right way. Now we do have some fiddly clear hose to put on this, which proved quite troublesome. Especially trying to get it to bend around the back of the vehicle. But hey, it is what it is. But lots of little photo uh, white metal. I keep calling the white metal photo etch. Lots of little photo etch. I've done it again. I've done it again. Lots of little white metal parts to put in place and some that need drilling and opening up. So again, refer to instructions. And so at this point, I can't find those hose union joint things that are painted. So I pick some new ones and I start using those. This piece though needs a little bit of wire. This is the same nickel wire we use for the brake uh, caliper uh, pad retentions. And then it just glues in place there at the bottom. I'm not even going to pretend to know these parts are. I'm assuming it's some sort of pump. And then on the front, there is a clear tube, which is like a, a level indicator of how much is in there. So I opted to glue the bottom piece in. And then rest in the top piece without any glue. So we could roughly measure this clear tube that comes with the kit. So I just did it by eye. I was literally about two mil off. I really was quite close to getting that by eye. And then align it back up. Like I say, you just need a little bit more cutting off. Squeeze the ends to get them to open back up because it is a hollow tube. And we're going to slot it over one end. Like so. And spin it around. We'll take the piece out of the actual tank itself. It's going to make life easier. And then slot it into the hose itself. Fiddly, very, very fiddly. The worst thing you can do here now is ping these parts into oblivion. So this is why I like using the decal tweezers because they're flat. They get a much better grip. There we go. Make sure that's the right size and length. And it is. So we just pull it back out gently again. Put it to one side, get our glue. Like I say, these applicators, invaluable for doing this. Here we are, they're ultra precise. You can get the glue exactly where you want it. And our tweezers. Back in place, job done. And there we go, there's our little fuel level indicator thing. More straps on this side, but we're going to get them through on both sides this time. So a little bit of a trick to do so once through and already double-sided taped a little bit of tape on this side peel the back and paper off fold it over nice and simple and then we're going to feed the other piece through the other side but go through the wrong side because it's behind you're not going to see it so we're looking through this way and that way we can pull it taut then when we've got the tank in place that's the theory anyway whether it'll work we'll find out in a minute 
So always cut the tape at an angle, or the ribbon rather, and that way it'll feed through wherever you're trying to feed it through easier. If it frays, cut it again, go again, because once it frays, it's an absolute pig to get through. But yeah, just cut on a little bit of an angle. That's why I like these Zuron cutters on the ribbon. It just cuts them very precise and very sharp. Like I say, just checking which way around we need to go. There we are. There we go. Then we're going to slot the tank in place. Just have a little bit of a check and make sure it fits. Put a little bit of glue in there. And glue it down and then position our straps where we want them. And just gently pull them tight. You can trim off any excess that we don't need. Make sure they're all level and straight where we want them. And then a bit of double-sided tape, bish bash bosh, job done. There we go. Now one thing I did forget, there is a big decal for the large fuel cell. I didn't see it until I finished this part, so we'll apply that in the next one or subsequent ones. We'll get back to that one. Um which really does kind of bring it alive, adds a bit of detail. Now, this clear hose is a nightmare. So what I did, it needs to go around the back of this tank. So I drilled a hole into the back of the tank and tried my very best job to find, fold this around in some array that looked okay. It was very, very tricky. It didn't respond very well to CA glue. So I just got what I could. I put a bit of CA glue on there. We're going to put a little bit of kicker on a um, micro brush. Just touch it to it and a vain hope it'll glue it, which it did in the end. It did take several applications to do, but we got it done in the end. And then there's a piece that goes on the top. So a little bit of CA glue again. Hit it with the kicker and then we can fold it around and pop it where it needs to go as well. And there we go. And there's both tanks in place, literally pushed in place into their holes with a bit of CA glue. And there we go, they're looking the part. Looking very cool. And then there's another piece of clear hose that goes onto the main fuel cell. So another dab of CA glue, pop it in place, hit it with the kicker, we're going to trim it to size and just try and push it down the back where it's out of the way and hopefully won't be troublesome at all. Now we got all these little details out, add a whole just a different level to the detail of the kit. Lovely little kit. Most of the stuff you need comes with the kit. And then we've got our braided line. So, like I said in the engine, we did look at kind of purchasing different ones. But these don't look bad. And I found the best way to clean up was with a knife, just to get the seam lines off. And then trim the end flush with the knife. And that way you can drill into them quite easy. So, just scrape the mould line off with a knife. And I found it was a lot less invasive using a sander. And it lost a lot less surface detail. Uh, and like I say, cut the ends flush with a knife to so get a nice straight edge. Uh, and then come in with your knife to the appropriate size. A little dab of Siego on the uh, fitment. Pop it in place. And there we go. Tricky to do these. Very, very tricky. We need to do several of them into this um, pump. Is it a pump? I've got no idea what it is. I'm assuming it's like a fuel pump or something. Or diverter, regulator or something. And uh, we've got two of them in here, and these need manipulating onto the top of that tank. So a lot of trial and error here, and a lot of swearing and faffing around. So I kind of cut a lot of it out for now, because I don't want to twist your minds and warp your brains into my suffering. So in the end, I took one of them back off. I found it much easier to get the other one in place. And there we go, cut the size, drilled the end of it again, manipulated where we want it, and then glued the actual white metal piece to the base of the chassis. Like so. And then this other one then we can muck around with and get it where it needs to be as well. Like I say, very fiddly, so just take your time. I think, you know, it's another thing with this. You need great patience. It's not going to be a quick build at all. It's definitely something that's going to take quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of time to do. And then 
And there we go, that's that one in. And then just a little bit of detail painting on those hose joints, which I had painted but lost them because I'm an idiot. And they're literally to the left hand side with a few other parts. I'm just a bit of an idiot and forgot seeing them. But hey, they're ready for next time. We can just detail paint these carefully on the model. It's looking good though. We need a few touch ups here and there and a few things need changing. But overall, it's looking rather good. Needs a bit of a wash on it, but we can sort that again for next time. And then we've got a nice, you know, bit of colour in there, different tones, and what have you, hoses and what have you. And then the beautiful discs. I'm loving these discs, they look really good. Nice tones of metal on there. Suspension looks good, the calipers look good. All the running gear underneath looks good. Very happy it's turned out. Really, I'm enjoying this build. I'm very eager to get back. So, a few bits of straightening up. You can see some of the white metal needs straightening up, but I know that's going to get bent again with handling, so we'll sort that out at a later date. Um, but literally, there's all the parts for the front and those hose unions we lost, and they're ready for a further job down the line. And there we are, to where we're at today. So, big step accomplished. Um, there, all the rear end done. All the brakes, the brakes look great. Um, there's a few things that could improve. There's a few things that need to go around and tidy up. Um, I put a bit of wash on afterwards, got a bit of wash on one of the ribbons, I put on one of the tanks, so I'll replace that. That's no drama. Um, and a few bits of excess wash need taken off. Um, we need to touch up a little bit of the silver paint, but no real dramas at all. Happy about it all looking. Um, and I'm looking forward, but I'm also quite nervous about the next step, which is the bodywork. I'm going to try and get all the bodywork sorted so everything is straight, everything fits. It's going to be a lot of work, and that's going to be part six and probably seven. I'd like to get it to primer, even if it's just the acid etch primer on the white metal uh, part for now. Um, that's going to be the next step. But I am enjoying this build so much. Uh, I started working on the BMW today, the A50. Uh, I sulked all day because I was just sat cleaning up plastic parts, and this is boring. Um, but he needs doing so it's a good break it's good to break it up um, but thoroughly enjoying this and I've got to get more of these I have to I know it's early days yeah for the nightmares that are probably going to come ahead and some of the fitting of this was a bit technical in places and you've got to be really careful about test fitting I cannot stress enough about test fitting these kits you need to check and double check everything especially before you commit to any glue. Make sure everything fits, make sure everything's the right way round and orientated, because to get it back apart, you're gonna destroy all your hard work. If it doesn't need glue, don't use glue. If you've got any niggles or doubts, like I had with those drive shafts in the engine, use a glue that will come back apart. I PVA glue those in on purpose, because I just, something was niggling, and I was right, because I had the front on the backs and the backs on the front, so that's rectified now. Um, but test fit, test fit, test fit, 100% all day long. So looking forward to getting to the uh, the bodywork. Um, it's going to be fun uh, for sure. But speaking of which, my buddy Jamie, who's bodybuilding this, finished his Model Factory Hero Alpha 155 the other day, and I'm going to pop some pictures up. Um, he did an absolutely fantastic job of it. It turned out really well. Um, this was Jamie's first one of these kits. He, he's a model, you know, he's built lots of models before. But it's certainly his first Model Factory Hero kit, and he's certainly knocked it out of the park with it. Um, he's the first to admit it's not perfect, but whose models are perfect at the end of the day? It's one of those, isn't it? But it looks absolutely beautiful. I know he's had a few moments where he felt like throwing it out the window, because I've been there with him. Uh, but it's his fault that I've bought this Model Factory Hero build. It really is. And he's now building the Lancia with me, which is fantastic. We can build them together and share the pain and trials and tribulations together but what a job he's done on this it looks stunning and there's a picture at the end of it next to its 124 tamiya counterpart i just look at the size difference absolutely huge so top work buddy well done for persevering i'm glad you got it finished in the end and i look forward to building this lancia with you mate so let's hope we enjoy it together and we both end up with some Stuff that looks or resembles a Lancia Delta Integrale rally car at the end and hopefully not crash diodes, hey? So here's that. So well done, Jamie, for finishing that. Um, top work, mate. There's more. There's pictures over on ISM. You want to look at them. 
Uh, and Jamie's put a lot of in-progress shots on there as well. So you can go and have a look on the Facebook page. But yeah, top work, Jamie. So that's it. That's where we're at now. Next video bill for me will be part two of the BMW. Uh, that's in primer in the spray. We've now did that today. Um, and then we'll be back to this on the bodywork on this, which is probably going to be a nightmare. But hey, we've got my magnetic tumblers now. Thank you very much to Peter. You are a legend, sir. You really are. That arrived today. I'm waiting for my burnishing fluid polish stuff to do it. Uh, I haven't got a clue how to use it. I've got to Google this. If anyone knows how to use a, a tumbler, magnet tumbler, let me know in the comments how much water do I put in, how much burnishing fluid do I put in, how long do I put it on for, what level do I put it on for. Someone let me know because I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. Uh, and whilst we've done all the parts by hand, I've still got a lot to clean up as well. So it's going to come in very handy. Thank you, Peter. You're an absolute legend. If you don't know, Peter contacted me and offered to buy me a tumbler because he didn't want to see me struggle. And he's appreciative of the video. So you're an absolute legend, mate. You really are. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll sh see that in action in one of the videos. I might do... It can't be a how-to, guys. I haven't got a clue how to do it. But maybe I can just... Hmm. Just show up one of the videos. Is there anything I can think of doing? Um, so, yeah. We'll see that in a subsequent video. But thank you, Peter. Much appreciated, mate. It really is. And there we are. So that's us for today. So thanks for watching. As always, if you want to support the videos and keep the content going, there's a Patreon me, a PayPal me, and a Buy Me Coffee link in the description down below. Get a release with the patrons if you become a two uh, level tier two or higher. Uh, you get two week early access on the videos, exclusive live stream, other perks associated, and you keep these videos going because without your support, I couldn't keep doing this. And there's other links down there to ISM, UMP, my modeling page, my scale mate, have me on that if you want. There's an email address you can contact me on, so if you want to ask me anything goes well. Uh, and there's my Amazon storefront where a lot of the products, including these new glues I've been using, and the glue tips are all in. Um, and there's also my product list of everything I use in my videos. So there we are. Thanks for watching today. As always, click that bell notification to get notified of the latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you sub to the channel. And please leave a comment. I love reading all your comments, including the patrons on the unlisted videos. Leave a comment if you watched it. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Uh, and the question for today, hmm, it's a bit of a weird one, what, not your own models, what model have you seen elsewhere, be it online, in a video, at a show, uh, what's the best thing you've ever seen where you've been like literally jaw drop, like oh my god, look at that, for me, hmm, I've seen so much over the years. It's very, very hard to pick. It really, really is. I don't know. I'm stuck with that one. I've seen so many models over the years from shows, videos, everything. Um, it's probably going to be one of the Japanese builders I follow on YouTube. I don't know his name because he's in Japanese. And he built um, the Tamiya Fujimi, no, the Fujimi Porsche, I think it was. And the detail on it was just unreal. Absolutely amazing. Um, but that's it. I've, I've, so many I've seen of yours, it's hard to pick on. Let me know what yours is, what the best build you've ever seen. Anyway, there we are. Enjoy the rest of the evening, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.